other characteristics to voice too um, that make it sound feminine or masculine. And so our speech and language pathologists can help work with you in the beginning to kind of you know, teach more about voice and how to add that feminine color to your voice that's not just related to pitch. Okay. Also it has a lot to do with tension in the tongue and in the throat. And um, we know when there's a lot of tension in these areas, after any sort of pitch elevation surgery, it becomes harder to produce voice if there's still tension there. Okay. So the speech and language pathologist can teach you how to unload that tension to start off with. So at just if, before is that pre-surgery? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so sometimes people have therapy and they're happy with the results and they and they're not interested in surgery. Sometimes even after the therapy, people say, no, you know, I still want surgery to elevate the pitch of my voice. Mm -hmm. But we think that for every patient, it's critical that you have the therapy in the beginning. Okay. Like I said, to teach you the, the methods to use after surgery to access your voice. Any pain in here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Okay, I'm just going to sample your voice. So I'm going to ask you to read these sentences. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> so go ahead. Mm -hmm. The blue spot is on the key again. How hard did he hit him? We were away a year ago. We eat eggs every Easter. Mama will make lemon muffins. Peter will keep at the peak. <laughs> okay. What I have over here is the tool that we use to look at your voice box. I know. It looks very scary. Yes, it does. It. It's not. That's why I always explain. <laughs> so what this does, it goes in your mouth while I hold on to your tongue, and it only goes in about this far. Oh, okay. And it's like a little camera, and it oh. hovers above the voice box, and we record it, and you're able to see your vocal cords after. Okay. We just want to make sure everything is healthy before we start considering therapy or surgery. Okay. Okay? So I'm gonna go grab the team and we will be back in, okay? Okay. Any questions so far? Um, no, not so far. Okay. What sorts of <coughs> uh, things about your voice bother you? Um, the bass, okay. really. And it, it goes in and out, like sometimes like hot cocoa or um, like lemon tea helps like soften it to me a little bit, but I still kind of go through that um, misgendering. Think? Where do you feel your voice when you speak to me? Hmm? Where do you feel in your body? Where do you feel your voice? Where do I? I feel it in my throat. Okay. So, if you bring the voice forward into your mouth, it has gives the perception of a higher pitch. Okay. And some women, if they do that, and then sort of change the color and the pattern of the voice, they're satisfied enough with their voice that they don't end up wanting pitch elevation surgery. Because pitch is not the only thing that people cue in to judge gender of the speaker. It's patterns of speech as well as pitch inflection. And a woman typically, you don't have to want this, has a brighter sound to her voice than a man. Right. All right. So those are all the things that we can affect with surgery. And the most, because all I can do with surgery is elevate the pitch. I'd like to start now by looking at the vocal folds and seeing if they're healthy. Okay. okay? Do you smell them? Um, marijuana. Socially. Couple times a week? Yeah. Every day? No, sometimes a week, yeah. Edibles or water pipes are better. No, animals. Edibles. Oh, edibles? No. Or water pipes are better than Oh, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, so okay. then like a cool vapor or an ice pump. You know, like a little cold. pipe gets really hot when you yeah. inhale through a pipe. But if, not that I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. I'm like, the ice dog, I think that's what it's called. Um, the heat is the problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I feel less weird talking about this now that it's legal in the United States, you know? <laughs> it's okay to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be like, this is off the record. But <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? You so whisper it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, scoot your bottom all the way to the back of the chair and then lean forward with a straight back, shoulders back. Lean forward, lean forward, lean forward. A little bit more. Okay, good. Then chin up and stick your tongue out. I'm going to hold on to your tongue and you just relax it, okay? And then smile. Keep your eyes open. Just relax. 
recording this too so first thing I will have you hold out an ah uh, at a comfortable neutral pitch for about five seconds okay. I'll start you and stop you with my hand so you know about how long but it'll be about that okay, okay? All right. so just at a neutral comfortable pitch whatever <coughs> comes out all right you ready okay uh... excellent I'm going to write these down. All right. Now we'll go to a different program. Same thing. So uh, for about the, for about five seconds, I'll start you and stop you. Just say, ah. Okay. All right. Go ahead and put the mic up. Yep. Good. Ready? Ah. Uh... Great. Okay. Give me a second. It's going to take me. A little bit to write this down. So what exactly are you measuring? So this is just how your vocal cords vibrate. So the first one, I mean, these are names that might not be interesting to you, but soft phonation index. We're looking at noise to harmonic ratio. Let me write that down. We're looking at amplitude variation. So how much your voice sort of changes within a given note. And we're looking at the fundamental frequency variation. So how, what the pitch of your voice does when you're okay. holding that out. And then the overall pitch. Have you ever measured your pitch before? No, this is my first time. Okay. I didn't even know it was a thing. Oh yeah, totally. Is it, do you want to know? Are you, is this something you're curious about? Or yeah, I like, am really curious about it. I okay. think, um, and since I never heard of it, I'm just like, wow, like what? What's going on? What are we gonna do? Like, how's it work? <laughs> this is so the pitch right now is one fifteen. And that's for the sustained note. One fifteen? Mm-hmm. So what's that on a measuring chart or so I mean, it really depends because um there have been female identified voices that are like and this is for regular speech. This isn't for just a held out note. Um, but Male technically is from like a hundred to like one forty, and then typical female speaking range. There have been as as low identified as one fifty, to be honest. Okay. But typical is from like one seventy, one eighty to two twenty. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna look at that too. So at one fifteen, I could just push it up higher. Right. right. Okay. Right. One fifteen. No, 115, yeah, 115 is still in the, is on the low side for what yeah. you want it to be. But, um, yeah, okay. sure it is. So, and that's only the sustained, we need to see what your voice does when we, when you talk as well. All right, ready to give it a shot? Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Ah. Uh, uh, you got to the crackles. Yeah, I cannot do that. <laughs> Let's try this. <clears throat> Let's try it. So, whoop. You're just gonna do that into the mic, okay? Nice, okay. One more time. Nice, excellent, all right. So now we can know how high you go. That's at 607 hertz. That is well within a good range for you. And then I'm gonna save that. We'll do minimum, the lowest you can go comfortably because the surgery cuts out the bottom of the range really mm -hmm. oh. yep doesn't raise your highest but it cuts out the lowest mm. so now you'll do oh, like you're tired oh. 
Ah, but into the lower. Ah. Ah. Yes. Great job. Okay, let's do that. Ah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. Good job. Great. Okay. That's it. I'll take the microphone. Thank you. I was like, I don't know if I was done with that yet. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you got other things? I felt like a diva. You want to record? <laughs> first things first, uh, something that Dr. Corey likes to use for healing okay. is called a lip drill. Okay? Um, a lip drill is this. So, mm -hmm. it's hard. Mm -hmm. If you've never done it before. <laughs> Yes! Ooh, that was job. hard to do though. But try it again. Start okay. off. That was great. Great. Ooh. And what I like about that is that when you get it, it's very consistent. It's it's like it's not you know, it doesn't oh. it doesn't it's not in and out, it's consistent. Okay. And it's not slow. That's a, those are two very important things. Um do you often do you modify your voice when you talk? Yeah. Okay. Say. What am I hearing now? Um, this, this is now? this is actually it, but it, like I said, sometimes I just talk and it sounds different. I can't really control my sound. Mm, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. No, I think this works. Okay. There you go, good. Okay. So think about releasing a little bit more air. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. We're getting somewhere. Try it. See if you can hold it consistent for like five seconds. Yes, Casey. Great job. That was beautiful. Let's do it one more time. Hi, everyone. My name is Casey Dash, and um, I'm recording this video because I have a voice feminization surgery tomorrow. Um, I have to report there in the morning. And um, I just want to go ahead and like at least make a video so you can kind of hear like my sound now. And like you can kind of see how it progresses in the future. And yeah, I'm like I'm a little nervous. I um, don't know how I'm going to live without talking for a while. I might just have to stay out the scene. I already had to do voice therapy and um, for this particular surgery afterwards I'm going to have voice therapy again just to kind of like help me find my voice again but it's just I don't know I have anxiety so it'll just be building up as like the time gets closer and closer so I'm just like oh, can we just do this already so the nurse told me that I wouldn't be able to eat eight hours before my surgery, which is typical because of the anesthesia. So that makes sense. Um, but afterwards, I'm going to be in pain. I'm going to have to eat like lukewarm food or cold food because I can't have hot food for a while. So that's going to be interesting because when I say I like my food scorching hot, like you know how you got to play with? Like, yeah, you got to breathe and eat. That's how I like to eat my food. So I'm going to have to really remember that I can't do that. And I think some other things that I know that I can't do from research is I'm not going to be able to cough. I'm going to have to hold that cough in as best as I can. So hopefully I don't get sick. And then um, I can't like clear my throat like... <clears throat> I really don't want to do any straining or anything that's going to open up that wound because pretty much what they're doing, let me see if I can show you like a little example. The male born vocal cord, whatever that is, um, is about this big and women's are like smaller to create a higher pitch sound. So that's what's gonna happen. They're pretty much gonna bring this to like this. And over time, my voice is gonna gradually change. It'll probably start off as like a whisper. 
I'm pretty much gonna have to learn how to talk all over again. So y'all are gonna see that in the next video. I'm gonna try to make it as long as possible so we can just get it out. And it's gonna be over a process of months. So just be patient with that one, but I'm still, you know, figuring this out along the way. Hello, here at the hospital now. Um, in the waiting area, just checked in. Five thirty, so it is six, almost six forty now, and my procedure is supposed to start at seven thirty.